Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Steven Gamer here. Today we're going to be doing uh, a review of the Siege rework for Warhammer 3. This is a trailer that's going to show us some of the new mechanics for Sieges and what we expect as changes. Kind of a little, little disclaimer for myself is I, I felt that the Sieges in the Warhammer series have always been kind of weak, kind of lackluster. Um, they've kind of changed them for the negative, so hopefully this trailer uh, shows that they're going to be making some progress on that. So let's get started. Sieging a settlement should not be an easy undertaking. Total War Warhammer 3 has reworked how sieges work. With and they can say that again, you know, with the walls being paper mache and the current Total Wars and, you know, no, no real um, uh, advantage for defenders. Uh, they can really, hopefully, they have definitely, like, reworked sieges um, and made some, you know, made some improvements. Keep going. New ways of attacking as well as defending. Every inch taken will cost dearly. Settlement maps are now larger, and we've introduced more variety of maps than in previous games. With the fall of the Turtle Gate, Miao Ying moves her army from the Snake Gate to Wei Jin in an attempt to bolster the city's defenses and drive Siege out of Cathay. Wei Jin capital of the Celestial Dragon Empire, is a three-walled fortress and a testament to Cathay's architectural brilliance. When defending, walls are the first defense against an attacking army, but by no means the last. We now have the option to turn the streets into a bloody maze. Using supplies, we can build towers, barricades, and traps. Prepare and plan your defense, but never rest easy. Yeah, so it looks like walls are still going to be paper mache. Um, you're still going to be able to get through the walls uh, fairly e easily. So that's kind of unfortunate in my opinion. Um, you know, uh, in the older Total Wars, basically the walls were somewhere where you really fought hard to, you know, kind of give give you, give the attacker uh, a headache, right? And really, you could even win the battle at the walls. But in the Warhammer series, you know, it's not really the case. So unfortunately, the walls are still going to be paper mache, uh, at least according to this trailer. Um, but they do have a new emphasis on street combat, so that in itself should be cool. Let's keep going. The first object for any attacker to overcome is the wall-mounted towers. Unfortunately for our Sinch invaders, towers now have wider capture areas, so defenders don't need to be as close for them to be active. This means we can spread our docked units across a larger area and pepper the invaders with arrows, bullets, and artillery on their approach. The might of Grand Cathay isn't enough to keep Siege from breaching the walls. The walls will soon fall. It's time to fall back to our secondary positions within the city. And even for the look of the walls, if you look, again, they're not really the Rome 2 or you know, the, the Attila walls. They're kind of, you know, the more modern Warhammer walls. To, that's just basically, again, like paper mache troops can easily come in and, you know, kind of fly through the walls. So... Unfortunate um, that they that they kind of don't rework the walls. I'd really like to see a scenario in Warhammer 3 where the walls are kind of like the walls of Rome 2, where they're pretty hard to assault, and um, you know you can you can kind of make a stand at the walls if you want. Uh, it looks like for Warhammer 3, that's not going to happen. Um, but we'll see how the street combat is, because sometimes you know making the streets and the choke points can still make the game uh, just as fun uh, as if you're fighting in the walls. Ooh. Our defense now lies with our barricades, traps, and towers. We'll need a new currency introduced in Warhammer 3, supplies. We'll start the defense with a base number of supplies and can gain more during combat by holding locations around the settlement. Minor supply, key building, and victory points. These key points have pre-designated build locations for construction. Once a barricade or tower is constructed, it can be dismantled for a refund of supplies and rebuilt elsewhere. But keep in mind, construction and dismantling is a lengthy process. Barricades and towers are destroyed if their health reaches zero or if the supply, building, or victory point they're attached to is taken by the attackers. Yeah. This looks like a good addition uh, for the street combat, kind of making the maps different. So even if you fight on the same map multiple times, the defender could possibly wall off some of the approaches and make you know make you funnel your troops into certain areas and really make the experience different. So this looks like a positive change in my opinion. Again, there have always been barricades and things like that uh, within Total War Sieges, so it's not necessarily the newest uh, addition, but 
it it is cool that you can kind of you have more control over how many supplies you have and you kind of make more uh more types of barricades within the city so this is definitely a cool addition that should bring some variety if this occurs your supplies are not refunded it's worth noting that whilst attackers can capture points they cannot build barricades or towers Rather than a messy brawl in the streets, Warhammer 3's sieges are about defenders controlling the flow of battle, using a settlement's architecture to plan and execute layered fallbacks and hardpoints, where they can chip away at an attacker's forces. To the yeah, so it looks like we're going to get some uh, verticality within these maps. This is really good. Uh, definitely having more layering and more complexity to some of these cities is going to be great, and I think they're going to go through some examples of how that verticality works so that's pretty good it makes people think uh, sometimes it makes certain areas of attack impossible um and and it's uh it's pretty good it does you know it does kind of suck that you can't really uh, hold the like if you wanted to you really you couldn't hold the walls anymore that that does that's kind of unfortunate but um again they can make up for it with this layered strategy this end, settlements have become multi-leveled with bridges and upper tiers that cross over streets, giving ranged units more opportunities to shine. A good many of these bridges and overlooks are dockable like the primary walls, giving our soldiers all the buffs and benefits of any other docked unit. In sieges, both the attacker and defender's role are tactically more challenging and more rewarding. And again, like it was mentioned, it seems like you're going to have to do a little bit more thought as to how you layer your defense. So you're not going to be able to just kind of have one hard point and kind of fight it out at one choke point. It seems like you're going to be la layering your defenses and you're going to be kind of giving ground uh, in exchange for casualties for the attacker. So uh, it is interesting in, in this aspect. It should be interesting to see how this actually plays out in game. Settlements in Warhammer 3 have been designed with more open areas and strategic avenues to hide troops in. The avenues are the perfect ambush spot, making flanking and devastating charges a more viable tactical strategy. So that's, that's really good. Um, to have maps where you can again hide troops, where people have to kind of be on their toes. They have to actually scout the map. The attackers have to scout the city before they just run in. Um, that's really good to see, and it definitely should open up uh, gameplay and provide more variety. In overview, Warhammer 3's sieges offer a diverse array of fresh settlements to overcome and protect. They allow defenders to prepare for a new kind of battle occurring after the attackers have taken the primary walls. They add a new currency to manage and spend on fortifying defensive fallback positions with barricades, towers, and traps which are used to further repel invaders. They allow for a multi-layered experience where units can be docked to overlooks and walls within the settlement itself and encourages real-time reorganizing of defenses to adapt to an ever-changing battle. All of these features, coupled with dynamic new settlement designs, make for challenging and satisfying sieges packed with highs, lows, and phenomenal visuals. Yeah, so it looks like, again, there's a lot of changes to sieges. Do I think that they're going to be as good as they were in Rome 2 um, and Attila? Probably not. Again, they, they haven't really addressed the walls and how weak they are. Um, they've kind of went in a different direction where they want more of the fighting to be within the city. So I don't think this will be as good as old Total Wars, but definitely it's good that they're, they're making at least some changes to freshen up the sieges. Wei Jin has fallen, but the forces of Tsinch will struggle to reach the celestial city above. The Dragon Emperor is safe for now. Even so, his daughter has barely managed to escape with her life. To Nangao she travels. Yeah, so mixed reactions to this. Again, they've added some good things, like for example, layering uh, in the street combat, the ability to kind of make your own custom fortifications within the city and kind of change some of the architecture in the city as needed but then they haven't really addressed some of the bigger issues like for example making the walls too weak um and you know making it a situation where the defenders aren't really at an advantage because really in a siege the defenders should be at an advantage right that's the whole reason of siege battles is that the defender is kind of holding on for dear life uh and basically out 
outlasting their attackers, right? They're, they're forcing their attackers to take casualties. That should be what a siege battle should be. So it looks like in this case, um, we may not get everything we want in, a, in uh, the siege rework, but still it's really good that they're trying and that they're putting an effort to kind of make the modes more fun. So those are kind of my thoughts of the Warhammer 3 sieges. For more Warhammer 3 news and updates, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you later.